What's going on, sport? Well, no, f me. I f that up, Dave. What is going? What am I doing? I'm doing sports opinions here. We're probably leaving that. You, you know what? We're leaving that on. What's going you on, everybody? Suck. Welcome to another exciting episode of Quest of Dose. I'm Alex. He's David. I think I'm nervous because we have a celebrity on this time, Dave. What do you think? So this week we have a special guest host coming on. He's someone that uh, David, I think, has known most of his life. I've known for a really long time, coached a man, talented athlete. Now he's a talented recording artist, making Manchester, the Carolinas proud over in Los Angeles right now. L.A. Meek, what's up, Meek? What's going on, Alex? What's going on, Dave? Long time no see, man. Yeah, know. Been. It's been forever. You know what's <laughs> funny? So we're doing the sh we're doing the whole spiel beforehand. We kind of have a chat, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, Meek, we, you know, you can curse a little bit if you want." Here I am in the beginning dropping f bombs, so I'm I definitely <laughs> gonna put the explicit tag on this one right away. I'm not even gonna edit that out because whatever. There's the Zoom lady yelling at me while I'm trying to do the intro. That it's like it's ridiculous. So yeah, but anyway, we have a fun episode lined up as we always do. Me and Dave are gonna talk our nonsense. You'll quickly find out that Meek has known us forever and he's going to jump right in on the nonsense <laughs> we have a lot to cover as we always right. do me and dave are like let's pick six topics and then let's shove nine more topics within the six because we're idiots <laughs> and we're gonna have some fun with this so let's get it going right away dave we, we have an interesting kind of double topic to start as we always start off with out sports first well what, what do we got going it's on not a double topic i mean oh hold on i'm an idiot we need to give Meek his uh, yeah. sample first. What am I yeah. doing here? I'm a terrible. <laughs> as professional as always. Oh professional as always. Professional. Oh, this is why we have six <laughs> listeners. So everyone, <laughs> so everyone, what we're going to do for you guys is we're going to give you a preview of L.A. Meek. He's extremely talented. You know, this is all serious. We've been joking. Extremely talented artist. Good buddy of ours. I'm going to give you a sample of his biggest hit right now, Domino, and... I think you guys are going to love it. So here's 30 seconds of the song. Pretty ass nigga like me got a lot of old. A lot of old. Yeah. 30 with a deal, pull it out without a kind of moan. Ooh. 30 with a deal, pull it out without a kind of moan. 30 with a deal, pull it out without a kind of moan. 30 bitch niggas falling down like some domino. Pretty ass nigga like me got a lot of old. Red pink, give it three light. <laughs> all right so that's that that sounds you know meek that sounds awesome you know one thing i noticed and listening to all your music it's tough when you're not one of like the notice guys but you have a lot of professional sound to you. you have a lot of uh good songs good samples that you're using do you work specifically with the producers or everything or is it just yeah. kind of getting permission or what are you doing you're actually working with these guys closely so yeah um so I, I own my own company, my own record label, KDKT Entertainment. So um, the only permission I need needs to come from me, fortunately. So um, that's the kind of good thing about my career. Um, but yeah, like from writing the song, get, choosing the beat, you know, um, I'm very involved all the way just because um, what I've noticed recently is that a lot of artists are just kind of giving the bare minimum to make a song. You know, I hear a lot like, oh, this this dude made 40 songs in 24 hours or 50 songs. And then I'm like, 48 of those songs are going to be trash, guaranteed. You know, so I really try to be involved in my music and I really try to take my time to deliver the best product each time. So how much writing are you doing on your own? I don't know if that's fair to call out artists like that, but are you writing a ton <laughs> of your own music? Do you have, um, you know, there's nothing wrong if there's someone writing for you and do, giving you a few things because that's what the music industry is. You're not yeah. always going to have time to write your own music, but are you mm -hmm. writing a lot of your own stuff that you're putting out there? Yeah. Um, I recently, I've kind of stayed away from writing just to, um, just to try it out, see if I can be more creative or if I'm less creative. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, for the most part, I write all of my stuff. I don't really like to, uh, at this point anyway, I don't like to depend on the word of another, you know, or the pen yeah. of another just because, you know, not to take any credit away from songwriters, you know, cause they are a needed part of this industry, but, yeah. um, it's just hard to catch that, that grit and that feeling of somebody else that, you know, you've never lived my life. You haven't been what been through what I've been through. So you know, um, for me, at least the music is a lot deeper than the music, you know? Yeah. So I got to do one request. I know that you and hack have been in collaboration, hack, no cap in terms of talking about doing things. Mm -hmm. I want to figure out a whole bunch of Manchester artists in the hip hop. And let's just do like a seven, three, two blowout. Each album. <laughs> so like all those coming from the seven, three, two. I know a few people, you know, a few years younger than me that do it. Um, but we got to get a big album going and just do a seven, three, two showcase, even though you're out in LA right now. Uh, but we got to do uh, something big from the Manchester crew. <laughs> man, you're, you're not telling me anything that I don't want to do myself, man. I would love that. You know, there's, and the thing is that a lot of people don't know is um, <clears throat> where we come from, Manchester. It's so many different artists, you know, that make pop music, rap music, mm -hmm. you know. We, I think David, we've talked about this before with, I don't know, when some of my interviews, we are wildly diverse and it's weird that, I think I talked to this with Coach Lister. I had uh, Coach Lister on and we talked about just, you know, it, we didn't realize it going to school, but we had quite literally every race, every gender, every religion, like whatever you want to say, Manchester had it. So it was like, we had a good, yeah. uh, you know, good good and bad experience i guess whichever one you want to have there you could have kind of made it yourself so we had a lot going on there it's pretty cool i kind of um i look at manchester as like <laughs> she's like the uh i say she manchester's like the prettiest girl in the group but everybody's telling her she's so ugly she's so ugly but it's like <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, you're really like the best thing out here so <laughs> i like yeah. it so so again everyone at the meek He's going to be in here. He's going to be talking to us. He knows a lot of sports, so he's going to have some fun. But he, what do you know about this first topic, Dave? Now you can introduce the first topic. <laughs> yes. Uh, now now I can. Now that we got a, we got everything that we needed to, to introduce Meek out of way. Very happy to have you on. It's been way too long Thanks, since bro. talking. But uh, the first topic is a little interesting. Uh, a little something that I wanted to talk about. But it I is about... Wait. Both the in the news about Bill Cosby getting out of prison, and then right after that, we're gonna go right into Britney Spears and her um, <laughs> and her situation. I'm just gonna call it that. But first off, Bill Cosby is out of prison uh, very quickly too. I mean, immediately once we found out that the charges were dropped, he was just out. It's like within 24 hours, which is very weird, but. Overall, actually looking at why he why the charges were dropped, uh, I know Alex, you agree with this now, but like it makes sense as to why the charges were dropped. If yeah. he was actually unfairly uh, tried in the trial, there's a lot that goes into it. Basically, the brief synopsis um, in the civil case, he agreed to say things that weren't going to be used to charge him in a criminal case. There was an agreement there. Then they then. They, they ended up charging him anyway for what he said in that civil case, in the criminal case. And yep. you can't just go back and just do that. So yeah. the charges are dropped. He only served three years of a 10 year sentence. He is 82. If he served all those years, he probably would have died in mm -hmm. prison. I'm not going to lie to you. But now he is out. Uh, apparently, he even called into a radio show at one point and talked about things. I didn't listen to that, but that happened. And I, I just want to know what your guys take on this. I mean, you can start with Meek if you want. Yeah, go ahead, Meek. You're the guest. Um, I think honestly, it's like it's kind of a funny situation because like it's like just because the charges were dropped doesn't mean that what was said to take place. Oh yeah, yeah, taking yeah. place. Oh you know? yeah. So it's like I see all these people like yeah, free Cosby, yeah, free the game, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I'm just looking at everybody like. You know, this you know, this is like kind of a technicality kind of thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, but um that's that's my people, that's my culture. You know? <laughs> we, we love freeing everybody, you know. But um not seriously though, I, I think for him personally, it was good just to be out of jail just because like, you know, prison is a whole nother beast, you know. It's like putting the dog in the cage times ten, you know. So <laughs> I think it's good that he did get out in such old days because, like, how much harm can he really do at this point? 
But at the same time, I don't think that um, it's good that everybody's like, yeah, he's finally out. Like, hooray, you know, pray the Lord, because at the end of the day, what took place, you know, I believe took place. So, yeah. I mean, in the end of the day, like you said, he's 82 for Christ's sake. What is he going to do? Like, I saw a funny meme. It's like everyone at Bill Cosby's um, getting out party and they're all just like staring at their drink. Like, it's true. <laughs> you're never going to be able to chill with Bill Cosby again, like, and not sit there and be like, I brought my own bottle of water. Don't talk to me, Bill. But it's like, no, what's he going to do at 82? Like, like, like Dave said, he's probably going to die if he served the whole sentence. Like, let the man out at this point. He's like, give him, exactly. a, give him house arrest. Tell him he could never leave his mansion. Uh, yeah, listen, the guy screwed up. He did a lot of screwed up mm-hmm. stuff. I think he did what he did. I think he did what he was accused of. He obviously admitted to it in the civil case. So it's like, but there's a reason why our legal system is there in the certain way that it is. And the, his process, um, his defender did a good job of trying not to get him put into double jeopardy. Now I said to David on the prosecutorial side, if I'm that prosecutor and they're questioning me, like, listen, you probably knew you couldn't do this. All I'm saying is, I took a man who drugged and raped a ton of women off the street for at least three years. I did my job, whether it was moral or not, or within the law. So right. I, I don't, I mean, Price is going up. <laughs> you know, inter- interestingly enough, uh, one thing you did say there was actually wrong. He never admitted to it in the civil case. He did say he got the quaaludes. He did say he wanted to use it on the women. He did not, he did, never admitted to actually doing any wrongdoing, which I mean, I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong. I'm just saying like he, yeah, he never got quite loose to he got quite loose to put him on next to his trophies <laughs> yeah. from Temple when he was yeah. no, I know. In yeah, I know. Like, like this, come on. No, I know. I know. I'm not I'm not saying you know. he didn't do anything. I'm just saying like he never fully admitted. Yo, let's case. put uh, me, me, but, let's put this on record that David is defending Bill yeah. Cosby. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. He's defending Bill. He's but, a Bill Cosby apologist. We're putting that on record. I, I did want to say I did want to say one full thing. Like that's always gotten me about the Cosby case just in general. It's I'm just all on the free Cosby train. The man's 82. <laughs> I I am not really on well on on being tried fairly, I am on the free Cosby case and that's fair in that sense, but not on him not doing anything. But anyway, uh, I digress. My whole thing about the Cosby case, and I'm just going to say this real quick before moving on to Brittany, yeah. is that I, growing up, I mean, I used to watch Nick and Knight all the time and the Cosby show used to be on. And that was something I really loved. Like, I know at the time when he was a big star, like he was one of the guys who was like big on family and I was, he was a huge thing. Yeah. for that reason and it, it, it just always was really annoying that this guy who was so big and really a moral value to the country and to a, a ton of people was doing this like it, it's just it's like if it we just found out feel right. was taking steroids or something like that like it's, well, it, it's worse but yeah but i mean well, in terms you, of like a, guys, a shock to you do you guys watch um rick and marty at all so a little bit. Yeah, here. I watched a bit. Yeah, watches yeah. it more. I don't watch yeah. it. So, I haven't watched any yeah. of the recent stuff. There's there's an episode right, which is kind of reminds me of, of what you just said. David. Are you talking about the uh, bean and the the plant? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, yes. there's this there's this bean that everybody like praises and looks up to. Yeah, he's a mayor but behind the closed doors. He's like raping people. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he comes out and everybody's like, "Oh, we love you," da, 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 but nobody knows what he's actually doing, and it, it kind of relates to um this situation mm-hmm. just because that's kind of how we've always looked at Bill Cosby. I remember growing up, you know, yeah. he was like a uh, extra father. That was not my father, you know? Yeah. Um, he was, yeah. he was, he was able to teach a lot of people life lessons through the TV screen. So I think that's why it's so hard for people to kind of mm-hmm. accept the reality, but you know, the reality is that was just, that's the culture, especially out here. You know, I'm 30 minutes down the street from Hollywood. Like that's how it goes. People, people are <clears throat> paying uh, money for sex. You know, uh, these guys are like, unfortunately keeping these girls high out of their mind where they can't even decide. Yeah. And, yes and, or no, and see, know? the thing is, that's why I felt like we needed a Bill Cosby in our lives before this stuff happened. <laughs> like that, that's about? exactly what it felt like. Why we I'm needed Bill right. Cosby. And, you know, when you talk I, I, about Cosby and then there's Harvey Weinstein doing what he did to yeah. all of his low level interns. And it's like you said, that's a lifestyle out there. And, you know, what you said kind of about like your culture. I know you said it joking around, but it reminded me of an episode of the boondocks where everyone was all about like R. Kelly being on trial. And you had the one, oh, you know, God, yeah. um, black man, the trial lawyer being like, no, he 
he's wrong. He's doing this. And everyone's like, nah, he's R. Kelly. And R. Kelly just starts singing. <laughs> everyone's cool. Like, I feel like if Cosby got up and started doing his little Cosby show dance, like it would have been done. He would have gotten off. He's just too old to do the dance. But so yeah. let's move on to dancers. Dave. Yeah, we're going to move on. Yeah. yeah that, going on. Good transition. Very good Dang. transition. Yeah, we got to move years, quickly. We have, we have way too many damn topics. Yeah, we we got to move quickly. Oh, but next is Britney Spears. She is in a conservator- conservatorship and her father tells her basically everything to do with her money. And according her to life, she can't take birth control without him telling her to do it. Yes. That's what it Ridiculous. seems like. It seems like it's, seems like it's that bad. Like a signed agreement between. You well, know when she went insane with her and K fed yeah. and shaved her head and everything. Uh-huh. They basically said like, you can't control yourself and your daddy's going to now control everything about you. So I'm mm-hmm. sorry, Dave, I, I stole your thunder. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, if I remember correctly, it's supposed to be that he's mainly in control of her finances. But apparently, yeah. according to what she said, uh, he's even in charge of like what dance moves she's allowed to use in her videos or whatever like that. Yeah. Now, this is all from Britney's testimony. So let's let's understand that it's not from it's not from the scripture It's not in cemented in stone, but it sounds awful. And yep. if even half the stuff is true, then it just it does not feel right to have a person that is at least in a sound, a sound enough mental state compared to some of the people we see if we even go to Walmart, uh, <laughs> like being forced to live like that. Now, <laughs> me to Walmart. Now, yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> she applied to have the conservatorship uh, gone completely, right? Um, well, she screwed up. She didn't have the right petition or paperwork signed and the judge told her because I think one thing that we a bunch of us saw was her plea and she did a whole entire big speech and everything about it. And the judge was like, "Ah, it was great and all, but you you didn't do the right paperwork. You didn't have the proper petition signed to do that. Mm -hmm. So we can't do that for you. And basically, I think she's in the process and her lawyer and her team of getting that all together to try and go at it again. But yeah, she kind of screwed herself there and her team kind of dropped the ball. Yes. All right. Now, that's basically all of it. Uh, Meek, I don't know if you heard about this at all. Uh, no, I've, I've heard about it, but I haven't had too many um, details uh, on what's going on. I just know that um, from her side of things, like she just feels like she just has absolutely no control over yeah. her life. And like, it, it, honestly, it, she, the way she makes it sound like it's almost like I, I get the hint that she's kind of just tired of life at this point like mm-hmm. she's yeah. like what's the point you know i went yeah. through all this stuff and now that i'm actually able you know at least mm-hmm. someone to take care of myself and control my actions like yeah i'm not even allowed to do that so you know it's kind of crazy i feel for her for sure yeah i kind of compared it to like modern day serfdom like yeah. she's a surf right now she's working making money for her team like uh, you know i was like reading up stuff obviously coming into the show and it's like she did her vegas thing which is wildly popular the most popular thing vegas has ever seen mm-hmm. and she wanted to end it years before and they were like mm, sorry you can't and she had to go on and perform again and she needs to constantly do workouts and eat the things that she's told to eat because she needs to maintain her body like and whether or not she wants to do that she's now yeah. forced to do that so yeah. it's ridiculous things and i you know i read another thing and it was like the reason everyone remembers britney cutting her hair off and we were young mm-hmm. i think you guys i'm eight years older than you guys so i remember like the commentary you guys might not be as keen on it mm-hmm. but it was kind of like everyone's like she's nuts she's this she's that and then i read and it's like she was like she shaved her head because she couldn't leave the house without people like no 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 we got to do your hair you can't do this we got your hair your hair and she got and people would just grab her and do her hair whether or not she just couldn't go out in sweats mm-hmm. without her hair being done. So that's why she shaved it. And she was like, okay, now no one could do my hair. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone. So it's like, you got to mm-hmm. sympathize for the woman that she's hasn't been able to live a normal life. And I can't imagine that. Yeah. I'm 32. She's not that much older than me. Mm-hmm. And for most of her life, she's been told what to do. I don't know if any of you guys follow her Instagram. No. She was on Instagram dancing every like all the time. She puts videos of herself just dancing mm-hmm. in front of the same exact mirror. <laughs> And it's like, you could just see at times she looks bloodshot at times mm-hmm. she doesn't. And it's like, it's weird to see we're watching a woman get mentally tortured. Like, it looks obvious that she's not well. Mm-hmm. And it seems like the justice system's like, ha paperwork, you dumb moron. Sorry. <laughs> like, you know, the justice system, let's Bill Cosby go off on a technicality, but we see someone in need and it's like, 
I mean, you didn't sign the right thing. So, yeah. you know, go back to that. Like, yeah. And, and travesty. I just, I just want to say this, like saying that most and some of the stuff that she said is true and everything. I completely agree with you, but we also have to remember that we don't know everything that's going on. Um, so while I do agree for the most part of what we see, I agree that she should be allowed to live her own life. But depending on what we don't see, we don't exactly know everything that's going on. Now, I, like I said, I agree with you from everything that we see that she should be allowed to do whatever the hell she wants. But we need to take it all with a grain of salt unless we knew everything. See, Miku, you see why I keep him around? He's like the straight man. He, I go <laughs> off the handle, I say what I need to say, and he kind of brings it back. We haven't talked about anime at all in this uh, episode, so we're going to do this. He's like Gintama. He's like my Shinpachi, and I'm Gintaki. Like, that's where we I are. Yeah, oh, we all do. We we every week it's weird. This is the one first week I think one in week time, we haven't talked about manga or anime. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw it in. I started reading Chainsaw Man, Dave. It's amazing. It's all right. We're gonna move on. Now. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't read or watched Chainsaw Man, it's the anime. No, I, I keep on saying your name, man. I'm messing up. We were okay. just call you me, but I'm saying your name. I'm gonna edit that out. I'm editing it all out. <laughs> but um, it's all we, good. Man. We're gonna jump on because we're going on for a minute. This is what David and I do. Um. We're jumping into Rutgers recruiting. I never thought I'd ever talk about Rutgers recruiting. <laughs> you know, if Rutgers won a big game, I would think maybe we talk about that. But we're actually talking about a recruiting class. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Chiano is obviously back as the coach. Us three are Jersey boys. We all played football, so mm-hmm. we all you know have a connection to Rutgers just from being Jersey football players. Mm-hmm. Um, their 2022 class is currently ranked number eight in the nation. Yeah. And this is now beforehand, they were ranked in the top 10, no official visits. Uh, <laughs> Shiano was just able to steal with calls. Official visits are in order. They've had a ton of official visits and they are still number eight in the nation. Number two in the big 10 behind Ohio state. And they look like they're in great shape in two years to have a extremely competitive team. Um, they stole the number one player from Kentucky, Gavin Wimsat, from the University of Kentucky. He's at offers from every single big school. He's a number three dual threat uh, quarterback in the nation. So he's a fantastic piece. And they've just been getting players. They're keeping Jersey talent home. They got the number one guy from Jersey to stay home. They just picked up a huge uh, three-star Jersey cornerback that they beat out Ole Miss, Tennessee, Duke, big names. Um, and Meek, I'm going to go with you because you left Jersey um, to go to North Carolina before you finished, but you were, you know, uh, playing varsity as a sophomore for Manchester, extremely talented in the defensive backfield. What do you feel? You know, we grew up with Rutgers as, ah, they had some good players. You know, they challenged in the Big East. Big East was okay, but they were never great. Looks like they have a chance to actually set up a legitimate team. Mm-hmm. How do you feel hearing all that stuff and seeing what Rutgers is doing? Does it make you feel good being a Jersey boy? Um, well, I always feel good being a Jersey boy, <laughs> but, uh, I, I personally, I feel that, um, going to Rutgers for these kids and I don't know them personally, of course, but, uh, hearing the caliber of players that they are, I think that, um, Rutgers might be somewhere that's going to kind of diminish their talents, truthfully, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. just because I know, like you can, you can be as good of a player as you want. You know, but if you're coaching and not just the head coaching, but your position uh, coaches as well, if your coaching is not matching that level of intensity, you have no choice but to uh, digress and fall back, you know, to come to their level, you know. Um, So it really I really just think it depends on how uh, strict and honest the coach is going to be with these kids. Uh, Just going to college and playing football, that's kind of one of the first things that you learn is that your coaches are liars. (laughs) And Meek did play some college ball, right? You played college ball, so it's not like Uh you don't know what you're talking about. Meek did play college ball. He went on to the next level and played, so (laughs) he knows what he's talking about in this area. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and, and not to say that that's like that at every school, you know, but that is is one of the first things you find is that your coaches everything that they told you was a lie you know that you still got to work for everything that they told you they would give you you know but um like i said like Rutgers, i've never really known them to be a powerhouse and if you're gonna have powerhouse caliber players you have to have the coaching to match that energy too now, Dave, we've been going nuts in the group, especially me and Kyle Doctor, K Doc, um, because we follow the recruiting. I think everyone in the group gets it because me and him just are gushing over the recruiting. Basically. Um, 
how do you feel you know are you sharing meek sympathies where it's like Rutgers kind of has to show us that they're going to become that school that can handle these caliber players or do you have more of a belief in shiana uh i mean actually as i'm, I'm very happy that we even have him on because that was a great comment about that yeah, <laughs> like absolutely. I, think I actually would not have said that we've so been I, we've been uh fanboying I, Rutgers for well, so I, long i haven't even been <laughs> fanboying Rutgers. i've just been ha- I, you know me i don't watch like i don't really keep up with college football as much yeah. as i do other sports so uh, overall, I mean, I just think I think Shiano has proved himself in some ways, but yet again, you have to prove yourself every year as a coach. Like even let, let's say if Alabama didn't make it <laughs> like, to the playoffs, where you're going to start down talking Nick Saban a little bit. Pause. Dude, Pause. Alabama can go two and fourteen or whatever they are, and they'll figure out a way to put them in the playoff. Because but but you can still beat the best. Team no, okay, okay. In the but, but you understand my point. Twelve, whatever it is. <laughs> but but you understand my point. I do. I it, guess. Every year you have to prove yourself. So I, I completely agree. I completely agree and understand what Meek is saying there. And also, one thing I want to touch on with this and just college sports in general is that players can now profit off their likeness. Like yes. what we were talking about earlier in our po- in our other Quest of Dose podcast. Man, I, I have so much to, to say about that. Man. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Because honestly, yeah, Alex we, and- saw, we saw Reggie first. Bush talk about it. We saw Johnny Manziel talk yeah. about it. We've seen you know, a lot of Alex, players talk about Alex it. Alex and I are completely behind that. I, I, let, let, I want to hear what you have to say. Yep, go for it. What do you think oh. about it? For it's 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 like this, man. We are at a very historical moment in football, in sports. Period. Right? Because mm-hmm. this is just with football. This is NCAA yeah. Yeah. across the board. So, um, yeah, we're in a, a very historical moment right here because guys are no longer going to school for the, the love of the but sport. But can we be home. honest? This is for football and basketball. Like, if you're a small school and you have, like, a local, like, group, like, yeah. uh, you know, Maris College where I am, the women's basketball team is the show. So they'll get a little bit of money for doing signings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it ain't going to be like if you go to, I, I don't know, even Fordham and play football. The Fordham football program has a name because – or Fordham. So it's like, yeah. they'll get more money than the women who make it to the college tournament every year, but go yeah, for exactly. it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. no, I definitely understand. Um, but yeah, I mean, the guys like, you know, back in the day was, we're, we're going to college, we're going to the NFL because we love football, you know, scratch the money, you know, scratch the scholarships and all that stuff. But now you're the selection on where you go to play football or basketball or, or what may have you is almost entirely going to be based on what's the business like you know, that's something I had to learn early dealing with this music stuff is there's a business side to everything. Yeah. And now that business is about to be exposed to 17 year old, 18 year old kids. I, I, I like that <laughs> interview a lot. You know, yeah. and, and the, the sad reality is most of these kids they do no not idea. understand. Yeah, they have the no language. idea what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, so, they're not going to understand the language that is going to be discussed amongst them, you know? So yeah. it's, it's just kind of like now you're, you're giving these schools the ability to kind of you know flaunt what they know that these kids want yeah we got these cars we got these deals for you that are uh, scratch that we don't even have the major that you really want to go to school for. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah so meek on that no on that note, we're talking about Rutgers here. I'm going to throw in USC and UCLA now. Is there an advantage to a school like Rutgers who could say, we're the biggest school right next to New York City? You come to us and you are a star at Rutgers University. You can now walk into the city and rub elbows with so-and-so. You're now a celebrity. You can go get deals. You're a decent-looking dude. You can go model while playing for us or put, like do these certain things that a lot of guys are looking for. I know Odell Beckham Jr., could you imagine if he was given that opportunity and Rutgers was where they are now and they could say to OBJ, like, listen, your fashion, you love your fashion. We're around the corner in Piscataway. You could take a train every night and go do your thing as long as you come ball for us. Or yep. LA and USC being out in LA right where you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, would that give those three schools specifically an advantage over a lot of schools? I, I, think to do so. that? I think so, just because, um, especially just being out here in, in LA, like I see a lot, like my first week, I'm with people like Chris Brown, Lil Got It, you know, YSL's camp, everything. And, you know, I've, I've never met these people, but just yeah. from being out here, being yeah. able to network the rub shoulders with the right people, yeah. I was able to get in those those rooms. Mm-hmm. So it's like, with that, hell yeah, that's an advantage because you're not going to have the same, uh, what you call it, um, opportunities in Albuquerque that you mm-hmm. are in L.A. 
Yeah. You know, and, you're not you're not going to have the same uh, opportunities in Raleigh, North Carolina, over at um, NC State, you know, that you are going to have being so close to New York and stuff. So there's definitely an advantage. And I definitely think that's going to be something that these coaches use to kind of pull these yeah. kids. In. And, and see, the thing is, is, like Alex and I, whenever we've talked about this, we've talked about how just in general in life, if you, you ha- generally have the right to use your likeness and stuff like that in order to make money, it, it just didn't feel right. Right. For yeah. us, for like the NCAA to not be not let these kids have any like choice of making money off of the things that they put their blood, sweat and tears into. But I would really love it again, having you on for that point of view, because that's a great point of view. These 17, 18 year old kids don't know what they're doing with the business. No matter like even with the help they might be able to get, they, they, they could a lot of bad things could happen to people. There could be ramifications that we don't expect to see that are just not going to be good. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to think about this as well, too. Like, you know, we think about Odell Beckham. Mm-hmm. You know, when he was back at LSU, he was always a star. Yeah. Yep. But imagine that level of star being able to be backed by money. You know, yeah. my 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 uh, actions, my my, uh, you know, the things that Odell just used to do, mm-hmm. you know, these are now going to be bringing in thousands yeah. of dollars now. So, yeah. I yeah. think that we're going to see a lot more characters rather than yeah. football players. And, and, and it's, and it's funny enough, we just talked about someone who grew up in stardom and what's happened with them. So, like, and we just, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah there, could, there could be a lot of potentially bad things that happen for it. Over, overall, I think it is and generally like an American right to use your likeness in order to gain money and use yourself as however you want. Yeah. But there's a lot of bad things that could come from it. And I feel like I that's just hope that so, the integrity of football is yeah, safe, not, bro. Yeah. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from there. So I'd hate to cut this short, but Meek, I actually want to have you back on uh, during the collegiate season. Yeah. Um, when we start to see recruiting happen again for 2023. Mm-hmm. And I want to find, and we'll talk a little more about this as you get to see how it plays out a little more. Because like David said, your opinion is different than what me and him would have said. Yes. And it's yes. valuable. So I'm ready want to have you on, but we're already running. We're running very long. I don't want to uh, that, we'll bring you back on. So Dave. The next topic can be introduced the damn topic because <laughs> we pretty we talked pretty much about this a lot last week. At least me and yeah. you did. Yeah. Uh, me can share whatever he wants. But yeah. um, uh, the NBA finals are happening. It's Bucks versus Suns. Giannis might be out for the first game. Who knows? It's a hyper extension. He might be OK to play at least a little bit. I'm still going with Bucks and six. My prediction there. Uh, how do you feel about it, Alex? Um, I'm the same way. I think, uh, you know, I love what the Bucks did in game five yes. where it was a team effort. Brooke Lopez, I loved watching him lead the way. He looked like he played on the Nets again, dropping 33. Mm-hmm. And then you just watched Drew Holiday with 25, Chris Middleton with 26. Yes. Um, a bunch of guys dropping 20, 20, 20, mm-hmm. Brooke Lopez with 30. And then the following game to seal it out, Chris Middleton showed why he's a perennial all-star and all NBA player. Yep. And just led the team to victory. And I think really backs my prediction where he's just going to tell him to kick rocks soon. Yep. Go do it on his own because he can do it on his own. Yeah. Um, I'm sticking with that. I think I said the same thing. I think I said Bucks and seven or something like that. Yeah, I think you said seven. Yeah, I think I said seven. I think it's going to be a great series. I think CP3 battles. Um, I think, you know, Devin Booker's a monster. Aiton's going to give them a ton of problems. Because yep. I think Aiton does eat up Lopez a little bit. Yep. Because, they're you know, Lopez is used to being bigger. He's not bigger than DeAndre Aiton. So mm-hmm. it's going to be fun. But um, I like that. Meek, what do you think? What's your prediction? What do you see this series going? Oh, I got to also tell everybody, Meek's suffering from COVID and his ass is here. Yeah, <laughs> no one got an excuse for things on COVID. All right, go ahead. Bro. <laughs> it, it feels like I've like been kicked in my face a million times. <laughs> He's still smiling. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, always a happy time seeing you guys, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I got sons of six, man. I I think it's going to okay. be a tough one. I like it. You know? um, and really, it's just like I just see more malicious activity from the Suns, you know what I mean? Like I I see the, I see that dog, you know, you know, Mm -hmm. not, not to say that I don't see that in the, um, in the bucks, but I don't see that hunger. I don't see the same level of hunger. I don't see that coming from them, you know, (laughs) speaking of hunger, a lot of people have made a lot of points and memes about this, but there's been tons of injuries in the NBA playoffs. Uh, Should we be concerned with the amount of injuries that have happened or like, I mean, LeBron said he predicted this because of the early start and other things, or is this more just unlucky? What should we be concerned at all? Do we think this is going to happen again next year in any kind of way? Do, what, what, what is the matter with this? Bro, 
Go what on, they man. did with professional, like, just, I don't even, yeah, pro- professional basketball, what they did is kind of like they took the earth's rotation and sped it up even more. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> then now they're expecting these guys to be behaving the same. Like, no, of course, you, you should be concerned, but not with the players. You could be, you should be concerned with the amount of rest that you're really giving these guys. Like, mm-hmm. yes, they're, they're professionals, and yes, this is expected of them. But at the same time, they're human, you know? Mm-hmm. You're talking about guys who are putting insane amounts of pressure and force on their legs just from jumping and landing and jumping and yeah. landing, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. imagine, imagine a guy like LeBron, how much force he's putting into the floor every yeah. time. Like, it's nuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's nuts. I mean, I get it. But I don't agree. How, ma- how many guys actually tried in the bubble? Let's be friggin' honest. Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero tried, and LeBron and AD knew that this was their shot. Come on now. Most of the guys <laughs> packed it in in the bubble. Most of the dudes packed it in in that bubble and treated it like glorified preseason again. And then, listen, w- one of my problems is we see these videos on Instagram and stuff of these dudes constantly bawling hard in the gym a lot of times we see j cole in a bunch of videos with guys balling with nba players and these dudes are out there and they're playing hard if you were that concerned why are you still out there busting your ass playing hard i get it you still need to play your craft you still need to practice in the off season but take it easy like to me it's kind of i don't know i think there's a combination of things that went on i think Injuries are kind of freak. Um, Paul George didn't get injured. That, that tells me that the injuries are free because Paul George, if it was true, <laughs> yeah. Paul George would have been injured just by looking at the floor. So he <laughs> the whole entire time. Um, I just think it was a common error. Look at the guys that got hurt. Um, Kyrie Irving got hurt. Kyrie Irving's another one like Paul George. Kyrie Irving had a sprained ankle and should have been on the damn floor. Sorry, I'm an angry Nets fan. Um, <laughs> Harden had an injury that hampered him through the season, and it was a hamstring strain. It's a mm-hmm. hamstring. That can happen at any time. KD, the guy that recovered from an Achilles, played basically, uh, you know, the whole played the whole playoffs, played like uh, six complete games. It's a freak thing. Um, I don't think the NBA, I think LeBron's a baby. Um, LeBron realizes he has power in his words and he just says what he wants now. I don't think he even thinks about what he says anymore. He's just like, oh, this is going to make headlines. <laughs> so, no, LeBron annoys me. He's a great player. I will always support LeBron James on the floor. 1A, 1 in terms of all-time greats in my eyes. But he says things now. Like LeBron is always just saying things. I don't think even, none of it, none of it has meaning anymore. He just says it. <laughs> He's just talking, right? Besides, nah, that, besides that, protecting that. China, that's about it. The only thing he protected was China and his investment. <laughs> Outside of that, the man's just like, this is going to piss every... You know what? This is going to piss everyone off. Fox News is going to run a lot of cool stories on this one. I'm a saying. Like, <laughs> you know, half the time. Like, no, LeBron's just annoying. Hey, <laughs> just shut up. But again, you know, I feel like all that comes with the reason because there's there's celebrity behind this money, you know? The more hey, you can make it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my you God. Know, like, it's the reason why LeBron yeah. gets paid the big bucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> Man gets paid by the word more than the dribble. Like, let's be honest here. <laughs> so speaking of people that should be getting paid and should be competing at the highest level of their friggin' craft and at the pinnacle, Shikari Richardson, a hundred meter <laughs> Olympic trial champion. And I will continue to say this woman is the champion. Tested positive for a banned substance. Now, let me guess. It was, you know, uh, a performance enhancing drug, blood doping. No, 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 no. She smoked some weed. She smoked some weed the night before because she was told by a reporter that her biological mother passed away. Now, we all cope differently. A lot of people are like, oh, I would never want to grab the joint when I didn't. No, but that, that, that's you. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. To her credit, she has been fully taking responsibility for this. She's like, I'll see you at Worlds. I'll be your champion there. I did what I did. I knew I shouldn't have done it. This is my consequence. Mm-hmm. But man, that's a stupid rule. That, yeah. it, it's it, Especially where how many places it's legal. Mm-hmm. I understand you don't want people high while competing, but she smoked the night before. She wasn't high still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it's not she has some uh, obnoxious behavior. Or yeah. No, bottom like line, no one ever had a performance enhancer by smoking weed. It slows your ass down, especially a sprinter in a hundred meters. So uh, <laughs> that's my two cents on it. Shikari Richardson has handled this with utmost grace. She could be making a stink about it. Mm-hmm. And I think she's handled it well. And I think that they need to really relook at this rule and, 
I, I don't know. They need they need to figure out a level for weed. And yeah. if it's in somebody's system, how how heavily is it? Do they smoke in the locker room? Mm-hmm. And this is go across all sports. Or do they smoke the night before? Like. Mm-hmm. We got to figure out a level like we have for alcohol, where if it shows Mm -hmm. up, it's not at this level. And if you smoke that much the night before and it's above above that level, then that is on you. So, yeah, you know, I I, I just think um, I definitely think she could have been smarter about it. You know, Uh, there's always that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's weed. Like weed is not going to make you run faster. Weed is not ever going to make you stronger. You know what I mean? Unless you lace it with some coke. <laughs> seriously. You know? But like, not seriously. Like, it's, 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 I get it because it's a rule at the end of the day. We have to abide the rules. And if we change the rules for one, we got to change mm-hmm. the rules for all, you know? But with that being said, change the rules. Change the rules for all because look at, look at what's going on now. Now we're literally the fastest woman in the world. Yeah, our, our gold, our gold is basically but gone. <laughs> why wouldn't you want to show up to yeah. the Olympic races mm-hmm. without the fastest woman? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, it just doesn't make sense, man. It yeah. Now that's basically the same thing I was going to say. It's like two things can be right. One it can be a stupid rule and it should be changed after this. I mean, I, I think and she has been fantastic about this whole thing. She knows it was a rule that she broke. She shouldn't have done it. And I understand exactly why she did it. And I do think she should still be running, but she did what she did. She knows it. She's the fastest in the world. We know it, but I, I, I did like what Clarissa shield said. Cause uh, if you, you guys know who Clarissa hey, Shields is. She, David Meek, it's your show for a minute. Give me one second. I'll be back. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll keep going. <laughs> is, is, that the, is that the Mormon girl? No, that's uh, Clarissa Shields is uh, the, the boxing, boxing goat, oh, okay. bo- women's boxing goat. But she said at the end of the day, we're professional athletes. And as professional athletes, we know the things we have to do. And we know what we can and cannot do. And uh-huh. while like she's still supporting her, but hey, man, you know the thing you got caught for and you know you weren't supposed to do it and it happens. <laughs> So, I mean, it sucks for her. I'm behind her 100%. I can't wait to see her run again because she'll be probably back in four years getting the gold for us. So, mm-hmm. But they exactly. should definitely change the rule. <laughs> Bro, what, what had me out about it, I'm like, they, they got this damn, I guess they gave the vacant spot to this like Mormon girl or whatever. Yes, she's like, oh, she was in fourth. I think this is God's will. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Like, bro, what? <laughs> listen, listen, I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to hate on her. She's happy she made the Olympics. I would be happy as how I made the Olympics, even if it was yeah, because sure. someone got out. Be <laughs> like, 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 let's be real, Shawty. You know, you know, God did. God didn't have you win in the first place. <laughs> for like, God is probably up, up, up in heaven watching TV like, man, what the? <laughs> I done put all this work into her legs. Like, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, the whole situation's messed up. Uh, there's things yeah. that probably will be changed about that, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, we're just, I, I just, I just admire how um, she's accepted responsibility. Yes, yeah, so she's that. she's been a complete adult about this. She's been a pro about this. That, that's what she's been. She's been an absolute professional about this. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I haven't seen many people like against her at least not on my social media. I don't follow people that I've seen go against her in any way. So I, I think most, for the most part, people are behind her and supporting her. We're just going to move on to the next topic without Alex, because uh, he's <laughs> might be busy for a while. So, <laughs> now, I don't know how much attention you pay to the MLB, uh, Meek, but there is a man by the name of Shohei Otani who is doing amazing things. He has been named to the all-star the team as both a hitter and a pitcher in the MLB. Oh, the first time in history. The first time in hi- the man has 31 home runs right, John. He is in the home run derby and he's a pitcher, he pitch a lights out pitcher. What? Does he pitch left handed? Um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, I do not remember, but he's an absolute monster. I'm telling you right now, just look up highlights. He is ridiculous. And, and these are not like Piddly just over the wall home runs. No, he sends them. <laughs> like, <it laughs> like is out of the park. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a 278 batting average with 67 RBIs and 31 home runs and 78 games played. That's nuts. That's as a hitter. 
He has a 3.60 ERA. He's three and one with 83 strikeouts and 60 innings pitched. Nice. He is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and ridiculous. I, I, I have seen, I have seen things like we're not talking about Otani as much. And believe me, the sporting world is talking about Otani a lot. But I do understand people saying we're still not talking about him enough because of how historical he is during the season. Yeah, it, that's, it, that's nuts. Yeah, it is absolutely. Oh, oh, no, I believe me. I think everyone knows how hard this is. <laughs> and and I, I've said this a lot. I said, like, he's ba- he's just the Babe Ruth of our time because that's what Babe Ruth is known for, being a damn good pitcher and a damn good hitter as well. He called the shot, you know, everything like that. He's the Babe Ruth of our time. And like Alex said before we even jumped on, he's probably better than what Babe Ruth was. And I can agree with that because those numbers are absolutely insane. Yeah, uh, I, I, know, I, isn't even I can fair. already see it on fair. your face. Yeah, I can already see it on your face. I, like. How? Because I, I know you. I don't know how much pay attention you pay to baseball, but even you know if you don't yeah, pay attention, no, that say, how ridiculous. I don't even pay attention to baseball, but yeah. I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I definitely yeah, know who he is. Yeah. Bro, so, like, go ahead. The the thing that I think um, for those uh, who may not feel like this is an impressive feat, you know, just being a pitcher, a pitcher is a. Um, it's it's very taxing physically yes. on your body, yes. you know. Especially <laughs> and your then, shoulder. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, multiply that by two, being being such a successful hitter, like that's almost an entire body that's being worked on. Yeah. Day in, day out, day in, day out. Like that's crazy. Like the amount of like he has to take care of his body to a point where it's like none of this affects him, <laughs> you know, because I'm talking about like I went to school for exercise science. So I know a lot about muscle groups and how mm-hmm. things are used and just how the body works. Mm-hmm. And to be that good, your body, it can't be normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're talking about LeBron James being a super athlete. Like, nah, this is a super athlete. Right? Are you saying he's on some like Tom Brady work ethic diet kind of shit? Because we know how Tom Brady is, like with how he does his diet and everything. Like he tries to make it as perfect as possible to play as long as possible. Like I haven't yeah. seen many people do what he can do. So yeah. like that, it must be, if it's not well, something like that, then I don't know. We have to like, find a way to mix his DNA and some stuff and make some super soldiers. <laughs> Bro, it, it's, it's a whole nother level of dedication. And I think that's what makes him so special because, yeah. you know, not like we, we said before, I feel like I'm being very repetitive, but not only <laughs> pitching, but he's, I hitting. know, I know <laughs> he's hitting too, you know, like that's a whole nother level of dedication, you know, like, on a professional level too. Like yeah. this isn't T ball. This isn't coach yeah. bitch. Like <laughs> this is nuts, you know? So definitely, definitely appreciate a guy like that in sports because um again, like I felt like we were coming to a point and not just in music, you know, but in sports where guys are kind of becoming lackadaisical, you know, guys are, have stopped trying to reach for that next frontier in sports, you know, and then a guy like this comes along and shows it's like, ah, it's like a breath of fresh air. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's something, something new, something unique, yeah, something we haven't exactly. seen before. Yeah, no, I, I completely get that. In fact, let, let's talk a little bit about more before that, before I go on to the last topic, because mm-hmm. my brother's still not back yet. But what, what made you feel that? Were you just becoming a little bored with like some of the things in <laughs> Probably, sports? Like, <laughs> it's just like, there's, there was no more of a what's next. You know, because mm-hmm. it's like, OK, when we say what's next, OK, what do we think of? All right. What goes beyond the greatest players that we have today? So you have mm-hmm. your LeBron James, you know, you have your um, what is his name? The Messi guy, the guy that plays soccer. Well, no, Messi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Guys like him. You know, you have all your iconic athletes, you know, but it's like uh, what was truly next? in sports and now instead of growing up to say i'm I'm gonna be uh the next babe ruth or i'm gonna be the next guy who has all the home runs the guy who uh strikes everybody out now yeah. kids are going to be growing up i'm gonna be good at everything <laughs> <laughs> and that that idea in itself back behind discipline and dedication mm-hmm. that's going to breed an entirely different athlete yeah. You know, so how I said earlier that the the whole NCAA ruling where uh, athletes are going to be able to make money mm-hmm. off of their likeness and how that might kind of soften and saturate the game a little bit. I think that just this guy 
existing and breathing <laughs> <laughs> alone is going to save sports, bro. <laughs> you know, because it's not enough to lead lead the team in points. You know, it's yeah. not enough to lead and assist. Let's yeah. let's lead in steals and assist and the points and you know what I mean the the yeah. home runs and yeah <laughs> everything, man. Like <laughs> I'm just excited. I'm really. Oh, I know. I, I'm telling you, look up more about just his season he's had. It's it's utterly ridiculous. But I mean, I, I I get what you're saying, and I I don't know. When it came to like the NBA, especially when I was growing up, Allen Iverson has, has always been my favorite player. He's always been someone I looked up to, and I, I don't know if you're seeing like the same thing. But it's not as many people. I don't know who kids look up to nowadays, but it's not mm-hmm. as many like players to look up to and it's not even off their moral character or anything but it just doesn't seem almost as exciting as it used to be and now it might just be us getting older we might just not know as much as what the kids want to know about or what they want to see but it just feels a little different it's it's like this man it's the hunger are you going to be hungry if you're constantly being fed that's it's fair <laughs> you're not you know, are, you're not and yeah. you know up until like with players like Allen Iverson Allen Iverson revolution revolutionary all of his own once we saw him there was no more baby shorts on on the yeah. no more you yeah. know Allen Iverson changed the game and they mm-hmm. changed the game because of him now mm-hmm. now it's required that these uh NBA players are coming in in suits and looking presentable just mm-hmm. because Allen Iverson came in and said <laughs> yeah, exactly. Guy, you know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's just like, I'm sorry. You got to remind me the point of conversation. I just, oh, like, it was just like, do you, do you feel like it's, there's, there's kind of like a lot. Do you feel like there's like a lost influence on kids oh, yeah, from a lot of yeah. superstars nowadays, just in sports in general? It's just like things have gotten so good for us mm-hmm. now as athletes. Like, you know, you don't hear the same complaints in the NBA that you did 20 years ago. You know, you don't hear the same complaints in baseball that you did 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I feel like as athletes, we are losing that hunger for more because truthfully, you don't really want too much more <laughs> than what we have. You know, we're kind of yeah. satisfied. You know, and I was talking to this guy the other day and um, he had pulled up this post on Instagram. He's like, um, Jeff Bezos has such and such billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. He can literally afford to give every person on the planet a billion dollars and mm-hmm. still have billions left. Yeah. You know? And um, I'm like, okay, well, really picture what that looks like. I imagine well, everybody. I, I also I also don't think that's mathematically correct, but you can go on it's, making your points. Yeah, you know, yeah. Take, take my words with a grain of salt. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> the idea is what's yes, important. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I'm just like, you know, well, if everybody is satisfied, what do you think is going to happen to society? Mm-hmm. You know, if if you take away, you know, the the consumer out of the capitalist society, you take mm-hmm. away the the producer out of the capitalist society. You know, what do you have? There has to be in our society, there has to be a lower class. There has to be a higher class or Mm -hmm. else it won't work. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with a man named uh, Mansa Musa. He's like way, way back. He was the richest I've heard, man I've heard that ever walked the earth. Yeah. I've heard that name. Before. Most wealthiest man to ever walked the earth. And, um, you know, one thing that he did was give people bread. You know, he gave his people money all the time just because there was so much of it. He didn't care. Mm-hmm. And one day he walked into Egypt and Egypt's economy was on the break of collapse. Mm-hmm. And so what did he do? give them a whole bunch of money mm-hmm. and naturally people think oh that's great like now everybody's able to eat and da, da, da. Yeah. what it actually did was entirely ruin their economy mm-hmm. you know and then he had to go back and take all the money back that he gave yeah just to regulate the economy again so it's kind of like <clears throat> i bring that financial example up to kind of relate to the sports where it's like <clears throat> you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt because you don't want everything to be perfect because then nobody's going to want anything anymore. Well, I, I feel like it's more getting to 
there is no such thing as perfect. You may think you get there, but you're actually, if everyone has the same thing, then what is, what is there to want? There is no goal. You need your goals. In there. And this is the perfect transition to our last topic. Actually, I don't know how much, <laughs> how much attention you paid at UFC, but Conor McGregor is fighting very soon. I know, you know, that name, everyone knows that name, but Conor McGregor is re- going to be going against Justin Poirier for the trilogy, the, the third fight. They are one and one Poirier won the second one. Conor won the first one. And there is much to be said about whether or not Conor McGregor is so rich and so happy with everything he's doing in his life, whether or not he's still hungry as a fighter, whether or not he can win this trilogy. Now, he said he's done being Mr. Nice Guy. He said he's back to being Mr. Bad Guy like Conor used to be. He's back to really being out there. He's not bringing his family over. He's going to be mean conor mcgregor again he's gonna throw his insults he's gonna be that guy and i i am interested i really i really gonna love i think i'm gonna love this fight i think it's gonna be a war the whole card looks like fun um i don't like i said i don't know how much you know about the ufc uh not, I, I don't like the UFC. i'm not good. like a uh, kind of sore or anything like that but good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah but this card i think is going to be great yeah. and i think it's going to be capped off by a great fight i'm really not sure who's going to win that fight um, but overall, like, I just think that tied in perfectly what we were talking about. <laughs> so what, what, what do you think? I don't know if you saw the last fight with him and Poirier. I yeah, don't know I how many fights. Okay. So that, what do you think? So you mentioned that he's going to be like the mean McGregor mm-hmm. again, and, you mm-hmm. know, go about things as he should. And that right there is what I saw was the difference in the last fight. I didn't see that dog in him. I yeah. didn't see that dog in McGregor. And yeah. I don't think anybody did. Mm-hmm. And as a UFC fighter, you know, you're not, it's not like boxing, you know, yes. boxing, not, not taking any credit away from that sport, mm-hmm. but UFC is a different level. You know, mm-hmm. when, when you're in that cage you're a gladiator, you know, looking for blood. So mm-hmm. you can't be in there on some what's going on, man. Let's do this again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> have a good fight. Like, mm-hmm. nah, man, I'm coming in here to rip your head off. And when I'm done, I'm going to feed it to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to be on that kind of time. So I'm honestly, I'm very excited to see what this is going to lay out. But the thing is, too, from uh, I, I'm correct me if I'm butchering his name, but it's Poirier, right? Poirier. Yeah, you're yeah. basically there. Uh, <laughs> basically, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, with a guy like him, it's like each time I don't care if he loses or wins. Every time I see him, I see that dog. Oh, it's a, he's a warrior, man. Yeah, you yeah. watch every it's, fight. Isn't he from New Jersey? Jersey? Uh, I don't know. He's not from Jersey. I don't. I don't think he's from Jersey. No. Frankie Edgar's okay. from Jersey. You might be thinking of Frankie, but uh, no, uh, Poirier is not from Jersey. But he is a damn animal. Every fight yeah, he's man. in is a war. He's a dog, which yeah. is why I think no matter how McGregor comes into this fight, it's going to be a good fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think it's going to be a great fight. And I mean, this whole card is stacked. I'm just going to go over the five fights in the card, starting from the first one, you know, capping off the you know, starting off the main card. Tell me which names you might know after I'm done with it. And if you're excited for any of them other than the main event. First off, we're going to have Sean O'Malley fighting someone who's in the UFC debut because Louis Smoka, the dropout, and that's Chris Moutinho. Sean O'Malley is probably going to absolutely destroy him but we'll see after that he he has that like kind of like an afro kind of thing right yep his colorful hair yep yeah he's a lot of fun to watch i i like him a lot uh then we have irene aldana versus yana kuchkevaya uh which i think is going to be a good fight i don't know if you know either of them, I know could get by more than Aldana and she's a little I crazy, don't. but so I think it's going to be a fun fight. That one. After that, we have Ty Tulevasa versus Greg Hardy, uh, <laughs> which that, that's a heavyweight fight. I really don't think Greg Hardy's going to win it. I didn't like his cardio in the last fight I saw him in and Ty Tulevasa is a little scary. Uh, <laughs> then the co how, how do you feel about heavyweight fights <laughs> in general? Yeah. Just uh, like- I like heavyweight fights for the most part, because most of the time you're going to see a finish. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes they can get really cardio lagged because of this heavyweights. It's a lot of weight to be thrown around, especially even for three or five rounds. I don't, I don't know if you know, but I've been training MMA and even with me at 180, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. And it's, you can get tired real easy, especially if you're throwing a little hard. So I, I, but I, in general, I like heavyweight fights. If I want to see a more technical aspect of a fight, I'll drop down. I'll like more of a welterweight uh, to bantamweight and stuff like that. Even middleweights yeah. 
can have better fights with that with technical aspects but just the fireworks from heavyweight fights there's always a possibility for it so that's why i like them but yeah i mean i don't know if you feel the same way about them <laughs> no, I, de- I definitely do. That's, that's why I asked you because, um, yeah. like, I do appreciate the skill set of the lighter weight classes, but mm-hmm. like you said, with the, the heavyweight, it's almost guaranteed like somebody's going to get dropped. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. There's so much power in every single punch because they're so big. <laughs> like, if you yeah. throw it, if you throw a punch right and you're that big, you're probably going to knock someone out if it gets them clean. So that, Yo, that's that- why. That's why heavyweight's so much fun, and that's why it's also terrifying sometimes. Because you're looking at these guys, and you might think they're slow, but if you got into an octagon with them, they're most likely faster than you. So- that, that makes me ask, man. What do you think is wrong with human society? <laughs> why do we like violence so much? <laughs> well, we'll talk about that after the podcast because that would be way too long. That that would be a fun conversation, but we'll talk about that after. Let me just get through the rest of the card. The yeah, co-main the co-main is going to be Gilbert Burns versus Stephen Thompson. Do you, I don't know if you know those names at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, Gilbert Burns just fought just fought uh, Kamara Usman for the welterweight title. He lost, but he's a lot of fun to watch. He's a lot of power. He's pretty good on the ground. Stephen Thompson, I like a lot. He is a karate guy. Very good stand up. In fact, very diverse stand up game. So I think that's a very good co-main. Of course, we have the main, Apollier versus McGregor, which uh, I think if if we do see a finish in the first round, I think it's Connor finishing Poirier, and I think that's Connor's win. But if it goes past the second, I see Poirier winning that fight more. And it's not even anything about Connor's cardio or anything, because I think that's a narrative that's not entirely true. But I, I think it's more that Poirier has been in so many damn five round wars that the man just knows him. So if if you're, if he's going to go into that deep water, like I think he's going to come out the winner more, but I mean, we don't know what kind of Connor we'll see. I know you saw the second fight. Connor was very still in that fight. He was approached with a very boxing attitude. I don't think he's going to approach this fight with a boxing attitude. I think he's going to go back to his kickboxing where he's more in and out of the phone booth, as I like to call it, uh, mm-hmm. where he fights from more of a distance and he really tries to land that left. And he, he did land it a couple of times against Poy. I stung him a little bit in the, in the other fight. But I think if he doesn't get leg kicked to hell, I think we see a much either a much longer fight or just a much better fight from Connor. But other than that, I mean, Poirier won the second fight. He looks like the cleaner guy. And right now, I think you have to put it on Poirier for winning this fight. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go against Connor too much because I know what Connor McGregor can do. I mean, I'm not going to down talk his reign and what he's done in the octagon. But right now, Poirier looks like the guy who's going to come out the winner. Mm-hmm. I think uh, <clears throat> this this particular battle would be one that you can truly say who is the better man because yes. yeah cause now it's you've show. gone yeah you've gone you've gone against each other twice now you know each other's strengths and weaknesses you know mm-hmm. each other's habits mm-hmm. and now it's about who's going to be more physically prepared yeah. and mentally prepared. <clears throat> Yeah. We're, we're going to see. We're going to yeah. see. Yeah, I, I cannot wait. Overall, uh, I'm not going to lie, uh, who I want to win, I want Connor to win, mainly because the UFC is more fun if Connor wins, I, just in the lightweight division and in general. But I do I like think how you walk. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the Billy strut. Look, Vince McMahon. It's the Vince McMahon strut. Yeah. No, that's why you like how he walks, because we're WWE yeah. fans. But, but, overall, <laughs> but overall, I think Poirier takes it. But, hey, I'm, I'm ready and willing for any surprise on this main card. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, I just love fighting in general. But that is going to do it for this podcast. I do not know where my brother is, and I, I do not feel like he wants us to wait for him this whole time, depending on how long it might take. <laughs> Now, I do not believe I can stop the recording, so he's going to have to cut all this when he's done. Well, they, but they thank can just you. look at us. Yeah, exactly. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, yeah, it's been very, very fun, Meek. Uh, I hope you had a very good time. It's been a, yeah. a long time since we talked. If you and, and everyone, please go look at, please go look and share his music and listen to it. Yeah, my brother. Anybody wants to? Uh, is there any show left? 
No, we're just saying our goodbyes oh, now. In oh, fact, Meek was saying some things. You're too late. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm late. Sorry, my yeah. daughter was a- anybody out. that um, was trying to do everything, and I have the oh, touch. Really? Sorry, <laughs> life happens. Life happens yeah. even when we don't want it to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for for anybody that's um interested in uh, learning more about me personally, or just wants to listen to some music, um, you can easily just Google L A Meek L A dash M E E K, and uh, all my information will go up. Um, if you search up KDKT on YouTube, that'll lead you to my team's page and will lead you to some merchandise as well. We've got shirts, we've got goodies, we got everything for y'all. So <laughs> yeah, I'm a, ba- I'm a bad person. I don't have one yet. I gotta get one. It's all good, man. I got some for all of y'all. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, man. But much love. I appreciate you too having me on the show. This has been a dream come true. <laughs> of course. Next time we have on. you on, I won't have to run out. Hopefully, uh, yeah, really. about three quarters <laughs> through the show. That was ridiculous. I saw David's eyes. I'm like, hey guys, your show. Bye. And David's like, oh. <laughs> okay, cool. I hope you I hope <laughs> we recovered well. That's all I hope so. Yeah, I think we, we did pretty good. well. I think we did pretty well. <laughs> all right. Um, so guys, thank you for covering for that. Uh, before we close out, I want to play a little more. Um, we'll play out the about 30 more seconds of your song, Dominoes. And that's how we'll end the show. Does that sound good to everyone? It sounds good. David, I hope you didn't plug our Twitter or anything because we never use it. I did not. Uh, and we don't use God. it. So we're we good. Don't use it. We suck. All right. So let's close out. We'll throw on Dominoes for a little bit more and we'll close out that way, everyone. I hope everyone, I'm, hope, I'm actually... Give me one second. I got to actually re-square the square, share the screen. Oh, boy. There we go. Now we're going to close it out. God, I'm professional. <laughs> All right, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of Quest of Dose. Let's listen to some meek, everybody. Kenny KT, bitch, welcome to the spot. Whole cream on a dick and she eat it like a taco. The heifer got a wolf like the modern life of Rocco. Eating up the cock so you know that she a blonde hoe. Baby, don't stop even though I said stop, oh. Got a pussy on my brain. Still the same nigga in the damn team. Got a bitch living tight as a home on a ride with the ice in the cooler.